Hey everybody, uh, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great week. Uh, hopefully you're closing out the week on a positive note. Uh, no matter what it is that you're striving for, no matter what it is you're aiming for, no matter where you're at at the present moment, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. And that means that you can still win. That means that you have to keep pushing. You have to keep uh, loading up and refiring. Uh, this is not a sprint. This is not something that's easy, whether you're striving to build wealth, you're striving to build a family, you're striving to build a business, you're striving to be an uh, integral part of the black collective and the rebuilding of black infrastructure, the black family, black love. If you're all of those things or any one of those things, understand it comes with effort, it comes with pain, you're going to get marked up, uh, scarred up, it's a part of life. You're not going to get anywhere worth being hiding in a corner of comfort, sitting around waiting on something to come to you. One of the biggest problems we have is thinking somebody is going to fix a problem just because we let them know that the problem exists. Uh, before I get off into this, first and foremost, we really need your support. I know uh, you hear me say this, and I've been pushed by the people who depend on me uh, to get outside of my ego and ask for help and let people know. Uh, and as I was reminded by my uh, sister, Sister Latava Melabajingo, who came on and gave us the business about building sustainable off the grid type environments. Uh, this sister is the real deal. And she stood up and she said exactly to me that you've earned the right to ask. Now, nobody owes you anything. Nobody has to give you a donate or contribute, but you earn the right to ask. You've put in the work. You've been there. You've done that. Now, what people do when you ask, that's up to them. That's about them but you've earned the right to ask. So I'm asking, look, show some love, show some support. We have numerous programs. If you need to know more about what we do, click the link that takes you to the site. If you know what we do, you can either click the link to go directly to the process and just donate, or you can just send it through the, uh, the organization's cash app account. Uh, that's an actual organizational account. So uh, you can send it directly that way, but show some love and do that. Uh, anyway, one of the things that uh, has really been on my mind this week and is probably evident by some of the things that I've posted is I'm really at a point where I'm tired of seeing my people almost embraced their victimhood. I'm tired of seeing my people have aspirations of something that they're not willing to fight for. I'm tired of seeing my people sit up and have these unbelievably intellectually charged conversations and debates, but not be willing to step out and put some skin in the game. Yes, it's immensely important that we know our history. It's immensely important that we understand the enigmatic uh, conundrum that we found ourselves in called black life in the U.S., it's important that we understand with great clarity and, and specificity the racial caste system that governs all of the institutions within this country, uh, even many of the ones that we think we own and run. It's, oh, it's definitely important. It's an absolute must, but it means absolutely nothing if you're not going to take it what is discussed, what is uh, uncovered, what is revealed in these conversations, in this reading, in this research, if you're not going to take that and actually do something with it, then it's for nothing. It's a waste of time. It's, it's, it's empty and you could be doing something else. You could be finding something else to do. You can be finding your space in this system as so many people have. That's what you can be doing because what we're doing now is doing a whole lot of talk. We, we are doing way too much 
uh, back and forth with white people trying to convince them of what they already know. Uh, you cannot be in this environment and not be able to see what's going on. Now, it doesn't benefit them to acknowledge it. It doesn't benefit them uh, to sit up and want to uh, make things right because they benefited from things not being right for so long. It's one thing to sit up and say, you know what? It really is sad. It really is bad. It really, all the things that you can get them to say, all that's, you know, what it is, talk. The way that you're going to change things is by being willing to be a part of the change. That means that white people are literally, if they're serious about doing something, have to be willing to give up some of their comfort, some of their advantages. And the thing is, what they will not tell you is there's a great concern that if they give up their advantages, that they might not be able to compete. Now, they'll never say that. They've done everything in their power to convince us of our uh, intellectual inferiority. They've done everything in their power to attempt to conv convince us of our inherent criminality and violent nature. They have, over time, gone to unbelievable lengths to attempt to prove that we just don't measure up. But deep down inside, with everything they've done to us, with all the things we've had to endure, with all of the things that we were robbed of, before we ever started this race, before we ever, anybody that's here now was ever birthed, we were robbed of so many things that are so important to our identity, so important to our self-worth, self-image. Uh, even with that, they can't shake us. Every time they look up, we're there. Every time they look up, it's something being announced about something we've done exceptional, something we've done extraordinary, something we've done phenomenal. And it, it's in the back of their mind. You know, every time they look up and it's a 12-year-old or 14-year-old kid graduating college or uh, creating some crazy uh, apparatus uh, that requires a level of genius that you just don't see. It, it, it's not their kids graduating and sitting in lecture halls uh, where most kids are in seventh grade classes. That's black kids doing that. And it's becoming more and more common. Uh, especially these kids that are emerging from a homeschooled environment where parents are literally, in, literally invested in holistically educating their kids. That's something Sister Latavia talked about that education can't simply be seen. And I've written about this in, in two books. I talk about the importance of looking beyond academic achievement as a, an assessment tool for how well our children are being educated. Most of the academic achievement comes along with a great level of indoctrination, indoctrinating them into a culture where they are going to work for someone else, fit in, slide in, plug into somebody else's dream, somebody else's power structure, and fuel it. Uh, that's not education, that's indoctrination, that's conditioning, that's programming. Education is the preparation and empowerment of an individual to be able to think for themselves, to be able to act for themselves, to be able to go out into a world that's inherently hostile towards them, not only compete, but win. That is what we need to be doing, and that's what happens when you educate your own child. Why? Because you can see the uniqueness in the child. You know where they're special. You see them do crazy stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with the, uh, with the classroom, but you know it's special. Well, that's their gift. That's their level of, uh, uh, of power and force that is inherently theirs and uniquely theirs, and it guarantees them space on this planet. But see, if you send them to the school and you don't in, 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 inculcate into their minds and their psyches who they really are, they, it'll be robbed of them. It'll be silenced. It'll be squashed. It'll be it'll be put away, tucked away because it doesn't fit in. We don't need them to excel at that level. We don't need them to be free thinkers. We don't need them to be uniquely and self-sufficiently uh, empowered. We need them to feel like they need us. And I'm, when I say we, I'm actually speaking about them. You know, they need our kids to believe that they, they, they need them. And so they want them to be trained. They want them to have skills. They want them to be able to perform, but they want them to be able to perform for them. And so what, what happens is we've got to train them that in their gift is the space they need. And that if they understand that from an early age, they will be able to go out and do some unbelievable things. One of, another thing that Sister Latava talked about, you if you haven't watched that particular episode of the teachers 
You need to check it out because it's off the chain. Another thing she talked about is she homeschooled all her kids. And one of the requirements for them to graduate from her homeschool pro project with a high school uh, certification uh, of completion or a diploma, whatever you want to call it, is they had to start and run a business successfully for a year. And so that is in and of itself massive. It's massive in impact. It's massive in ideology. It's massive in socialization. It's teaching them so much and placing a demand on them with the with the expectation that it's it, it, it can be done. So it's not saying I'm giving you this impossible thing to do. Uh, it's saying, hey, you're going to go out and do it and, and, and you're going to be successful in doing it. And obviously it's easy for them to believe that when mom and dad were successful business owners. But then they have every, every successive child comes along knowing that their siblings have already done it. And so it, it, it just grows and creates this unbelievable level of self-confidence. I'm saying all of that to say this. Our answers for what we need to do to overcome this isn't in convincing white people of anything. It's not even in reparations. Now, do I feel like we're old reparations? Yes. But I don't think we have the leverage as of this moment to demand it. They know that. That's why they're playing with us. Too far too many of us are not prepared enough or not in a position to execute or carry out power in a way that we make our presence felt. Far too many of us are too dependent upon the government to test the government, to try the government, to push the government. We need the government. So we're not going to mess with them. You know, we, 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 we're so heavily dependent upon them that we don't want to mess up what we got so we take it easy we move slowly we move carefully we complain we want and they don't care about you complaining see complaining is a sign of weakness because complaining is a sign of power uh of powerlessness see no one who has the power to change the situation sits up and complains about it they simply change it so when they see someone complaining they understand that they don't believe that they can change it well as long as you don't believe that you can change it i'm still in a position of power but the moment that i believe i can change something I stop asking you to change it and I start changing it myself. And more than likely, I start changing it without consideration of how it makes you feel. See, I'm not concerned about how white people feel about what I'm doing. I'm not concerned about how white people feel about uh, the decisions I'm making, how I move with my people. I'm not concerned about what white people think about what I say. I'm concerned about making moves and doing things that will empower my people. I'm unapologetically focused on raising my people out of a situation that are about putting and giving what I have to this life and to this world that will in some way empower my people. I'm not concerned with what they think about it. And even my friends who I consider to be true friends who don't look like me, they know first and foremost, I'm here for a mission and I'm not turning back. And I'm saying all of that to say this, and then I'll be done. We are doing way too much whining. Way too much. We, we not only have embraced victimhood, we will literally fight fiercely and ferociously to defend it. Let somebody tell you that you ain't got to go through that. And you, you, you start talking about all the ways that you can't overcome it. All the ways that they just got you pinned down. Oh, hell yeah, they coming hard. But ain't nothing can stop you if you decide it's not going to stop you. Absolutely freaking nothing but death. And to me, death is better than imprisonment. Death is better than oppression. Death is better than being a coward. Death is better than sitting around. Death is better than dishonor. There's got to be something you live for, something you stand for, something you fight for. Question is, what is it? What are you ready to fight for? What are you ready to do? What are you ready to give? What are you ready to give? Look, I'm about to step out of here and uh, take care of some business. You guys have an unbelievable.